What's up everybody, it's Sean here and I'm back today with a review of one of the most anticipated sneakers of 2023. So today we'll be taking a deep dive into the Union Los Angeles Beffy's Beauty Supply Air Jordan 1 Retro High OG SP from the Summer of 96 collection. So if you're watching this video, more likely than not, you already know what this shoe is all about. This is the highly anticipated triple collaboration between Union Los Angeles, Beffy's Beauty Supply, and Jordan Brand. But the unique thing about this collaboration is that it celebrates the story of an actual married couple. Chris Gibbs, co-owner of Union Los Angeles, and his wife Beth Gibbs, who also co-owns Union, but she's also the owner of Beffy's Beauty Supply, which I'm going to call BBS for the rest of this video for short. As the nickname of this collection suggests, Summer of 96, that's exactly when the two met on a subway platform in Brooklyn. So this shoe pays homage to that time period when they met, and there's so much symbolism going on behind the design of this shoe. So first off, let's get to the facts. These are set to release on Union's website first on August 24th, and then there's going to be a follow-up wider release on August 26th. So the retail price for this shoe is 200 US dollars, which translates to roughly 265 Canadian dollars. And alongside these Air Jordan 1 highs, they're also releasing an Air Jordan 1 Elevate as well. So this whole collection is headlined by those two shoes, but there's a whole bunch of apparel as well that's set to release too. So the official colorway for these Jordan 1s is Sail, Muslin, Wolf Grey, Pale Vanilla, Kinetic Green, and University Gold. And to get the elephant out of the room, the thing that people either love or hate about this specific design is this woven pattern that's incorporated within this Air Jordan 1. So yes, this is taken from the Nike Air Footscape, but this whole woven pattern actually symbolizes a lot more. For instance, it represents Beth and Chris and their relationship beginning, so two people intertwining together. And also Beth was quoted as saying that in her childhood, she would recall her grandmother had sandals that had a similar pattern to it, along with furniture in her grandmother's house too. And lastly, in the era of the mid to late 90s, Brooklyn wasn't what it is today, and you just had a bunch of people from different walks of life just weaving their stories, their cultures together, creating this very eccentric place to live. So that's what this woven pattern is supposed to represent. First things first though, here's a quick look at the box. So this comes in a yellow toned cardboard box with a bunch of imagery found throughout the entire box itself. And on the top lid, we have Jumpman branding, BBS branding, and the Union LA Frontman logo. And of course, 96 representing the year 1996. And then on this side of the box, we have Union branding. And then on the front, we have BBS branding. And then inside the lid, we have all those logos once again. And the paper inside is also special too, if you guys can see. So all in all, this packaging I thought was top notch. And the box was very secure and very sturdy. So it should hold well underneath stacks of shoes like what's behind me. So taking a deep dive into these Jordan 1 highs, as we start things off with the toe box, this is covered in this very tumbled, sail colored leather, and just like any other Air Jordan 1, we have this perforated toe box. Overlaid on top of the toe box, we have another overlay of this same sail colored leather, but you'll notice that the edges of the leather are painted this very bright and bold yellow tone, which gives the shoe more of an aged and vintage aesthetic to it. But incorporated onto this leather panel, here's where you see that woven pattern. So you can see here, this is done in more of a cream tone. So they actually punch out the leather to allow this woven textile to intertwine through it. And it flows through the entire shoe wrapping around the back. Covering the eyelets, we have the same tumbled leather that we saw on the toe box. And the same leather is on the mid panel underneath this as well. And then stitched on top of this, we have this wolf gray colored swoosh. And this is constructed in what feels like a flat suede. And similar to the white leather, the edges of this gray swoosh are also painted in yellow. Surrounding the top ankle collar area, we have more of that tumbled sail leather, and then debossed across it on the lateral side, we have the Air Jordan Wings logo, and this is filled in with gray paint. Underneath this, also just on the lateral side, we have that signature yellow tag with Union LA branding, and then beneath this, connecting the upper of the shoe to the bottom, we have this vibrant green colored zigzag stitch, and this loops around the entire shoe, which pays homage to Union's Jordan 1 collaboration back in 2018. On the bottom of the heel, we have more of that tumbled leather. Above this, you can see that woven textile. And then we have a rectangular patch of leather with BBS stitched across in green. And then the very top of the ankle collar area, this is covered in the gray colored synthetic suede, which has a felt like feel to it in person. As far as the laces go, so these come with two different lace options. The one that the shoe comes with are these two-tone laces, which feels very thin and very broken in already. So the laces are colored in sale for the most part, but you can see it transitions to a gray color in the areas where the laces go above that green colored stitch line. And this again is something we've seen before on that 2018 Union Jordan 1. 
If you're not feeling these two-tone laces, don't worry. They also give you a secondary pair of flat style yellow colored laces if you want to make the shoe really, really pop. Underneath this, we have your typical Jordan 1 nylon tongue, and this is given an aged appearance to it as it's slightly yellowed. Cutting across near the top of the tongue, once again, we have that contrast green colored stitching. And then on the very top of the tongue, we have this gray tag with Nike Air branding woven across. And then you'll see the edges of the tongue. This is left unfinished, exposing the yellow colored foam that's underneath this nylon top layer. The interior of the shoe is lined in a gray colored mesh. And then taking a look at the insoles, so these come with a polyurethane line insole. It's covered in this green colored finish on top. And then we have Nike Air branding pressed onto the heel in white. So the upper of the Jordan 1 sits atop this solid rubber cup sole, which is painted in this vintage looking cream color. In case within the midsole but not visible to the eye, there is Nike Air technology for cushioning. And then finally, turning this pair over to the bottom, this is just your typical Jordan 1 outsole. So in this case, it's constructed in a slightly darker cream color, so it stands out a little bit compared to the midsole shade. But design-wise, it's exactly the same, so we still have that same circular pivot point on the forefoot, along with the Nike logo right in the center. So that breaks down the look and the construction of these Union BBS Jordan 1s. And for those wondering about sizing, to me, these pretty much fit like any other Jordan 1 high, so I feel like most people should be okay going true to size. My foot measures as a true size 10, slightly on the wider side. I got these in a size 10, and they're just about an index finger's width between the top of the shoe and the top of my toe, so that leaves me enough room for my toes to wiggle, but it's not too big that there's heel slippage. So whatever size you normally go with with the Air Jordan 1 High, I just stick with that exact same size for this pair and you should be okay. Moving on to the comfort, so these pretty much feel like any other Air Jordan 1. So if you're watching this video, most likely you've already worn an Air Jordan 1 before. So in my opinion, Jordan 1s feel pretty flat, firm, and low to the ground. There's not too much from a softness and step in comfort perspective, but for a casual use shoe, they're going to be perfectly fine. If you're expecting a shoe that's very plush, very cushioned with the most updated tech, then these are definitely not for you. But with a shoe with technology from the mid 80s, Jordan 1s are extremely popular for casual use sneakers. So that probably tells you that it's not that uncomfortable. Again, it comes down to personal preference. Some people love Jordan 1s and some people hate them. Finally, in terms of the quality and the craftsmanship on this shoe, so first off, material quality was extremely impressive. Other than this upper collar that had a felt-like feel to it, the rest of the materials used on this shoe was very impressive. For sure, my favorite part though was the leather that they used. It's a very nicely tumbled, very thick cut of leather, but at the same time, it feels extremely soft and very broken in. So I love the variety of the materials used on this shoe, and from a build and craftsmanship standpoint, honestly, this pair was pretty flawless. I thought the stitching on the shoe was done extremely well. No visible glue stains, no paint blobs, nothing like that. So I came away feeling very impressed, so it really looked and felt special, like the true collaboration that it is. So with all that out of the way now, let me toss these on feet, I'll lace them up for you and I'll show you guys how these look. I know this video alone is probably gonna split a lot of upvotes and downvotes just because of the nature of the design of this shoe. I get it, it's not a very safe design. And I totally understand why there's people that hate the look of this shoe. And heck, even my wife, when she saw me take these out of the box, she gave me the biggest stank face, which told me all that I needed to know. But for me, I think this is a risk that they took that really ended up working this time. Yes, incorporating the woven layer, it does make it stand out, but by making it sort of a tonal shade, I didn't think it was as glaring or as in your face as it could have been. And I like how there's aspects of the design of this shoe that pays homage to that 2018 collaboration, which to many people is considered a gold standard for Air Jordan 1 collabs. So this is a bit of old, a bit of new, and at the end of the day, it's not a safe design, and it gets the community talking. So let me know what you guys think about this Union BBS Air Jordan 1. Are you in the camp that absolutely hates the design of this shoe or are you more on the side that actually likes the design and you're looking to pick these up on August 24th? So drop your comments down below, let's talk about this and I'm very curious to hear your opinions. 
If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram at esco8, follow my Twitter account at sean.go, and visit my website at seango.ca. So thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoy this review, and hopefully it helped you in some way. Good luck to everyone trying to get these later on this month, and I'll catch you guys all in the next one.